leave this city and strive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. Okay, I know y'all are probably really tired of all of the gardening stuff, but we just got home from picking up trim from Lowe's because we're working on our bedroom today and in this video, but look what came in the mail. Cody ordered me a crap ton of seeds, so I already started sorting them. This one is winter, these are our summers, and then these I still need to go through. Um, I believe we are going to plant a few, but probably not in this video. Handsome boy, handsome. Well, I have toolboxes on my truck to hold on my mechanics tools and everything, and I keep a box of gloves in there. Put my glove on, and I notice there's a spider web on the finger, and then I look a little closer. All that white stuff is egg sacs. It's tiny little dots, which I'm assuming are egg sacs. So, spider laid its eggs on my glove. What is it? Back poke. That's like four teaspoons, right? What is it? Uh, fertilizer. So we've been doing a bunch of random stuff around the house over the past couple days because it's been raining a ton as you saw. It's not raining anymore and it's not supposed to rain for a few more days but the ground is way soppy to do anything um, to get the tractor anywhere. We were originally going to work on a pump house or the duck coop. Can't do either. So. We're going to work in the bedroom. Here. And I know a lot of y'all have been wanting us to work in the house so. Figure we change it up a bit and uh, throw in an inside the house video. Yep, so let's get started. Summer decided that she wanted a ceiling fan in the bedroom. Hey. And we decided while we were building the house not to put ceiling fans anywhere. So we didn't run any wiring for it or anything like that. But luckily we haven't spackled this wall yet. I took this piece of drywall down and went ahead and ran some wire. Um, currently it's just coiled up and sitting right there. So we're still gonna have to get it to the center of the ceiling to put the ceiling fan in, but we're not gonna be doing that today. Today we're just gonna work on getting this wall sealed up the rest of the way, and then we're gonna work on some trim around the bedroom. So we didn't get the chance to film this, but one thing I wanted to show is I actually added in some 12 volt plugs. They're just SAE plugs with covers like you would have on your RV for solar panels or something like that. But I wanted to have those ran through the wall and we're gonna hook up a solar panel on the outside of the house. That way we can directly charge our power banks inside the house without having to go set them on the ground outside and plugging them into solar panels like that. And the reason for that being, we still have a couple solar panels that are mismatched, so we can't use them with the house, but we don't want to just let them sit around and not get used. So we figured this would be a good way to be able to use those old panels that we can't currently use with the house. And then if you remember back in our inverter video, we hooked up that disconnect box on the outside of the house to be able to run wire from the house to the inverter. Um, so this is what we did on the inside of the house. We took some conduit and ran through the wall and then up into our electrical box.
And then because he's about to make a ton of dust, we have this plastic on the bed to protect it. I gotta get the Crocs. So, this is my closet. I feel like I always have to like, I'm not even a tall person, but like I'm short, babe. Why do I always have to? Because I don't have a good tripod, nor am I going to spend the money on a tripod. Yeah, so I just down. use random things in my house to set the camera on. For instance, right now, window seal. Okay, here we are. So, back to what I was saying. Next, we're going to get the closet door hung. Yes, this um, is really important to me because eventually we're going to have a bed that has storage underneath, like drawers to put all of my clothes. Until then, all of my clothes are in a laundry basket. And um, our Pitbull German Shepherd mix is absolutely obsessed with me. So whenever we leave the house, he comes to my clothes basket and destroys everything. And I don't have a lot of clothes, so... We're going to get the door put on. We're going to get the door put on. This originally fit perfectly, but since we added the drywall, he has to cut it. I really just need to take half an inch off. That's ridiculous. Finally found my Crocs. And yes, these are safety glasses. Oh my God, you dork. The doors got water damage back whenever the containers were not sealed in, but that is completely okay because I'm going to paint them. We'll eventually add floor guides whenever we put our tile down because we're gonna put tile on our floors that looks like wood. So it'll look like hardwood floors, but it'll actually be tile. There's lots of reasons for that, so we'll talk about that whenever we get to it. But we'll put our floor guides in there then. Until then, we'll just be super careful with it. I really forgot when we went to Home Depot that we need to get trim for that door too. I only got trim for the two doors, not the closet door. Oh well. Yeah, we'll have to pick that up later. Yeah. Speaking of trim, the next thing that we are going to work on is our bedroom windows. So I drywalled and mudded our bedroom windows. And now we're gonna work on putting in window seals. So the inside's going to stay drywall and it'll get painted and then we're gonna put wood trim right here. And then because our house is a little bit different and we had to do steel tubing, we're gonna put quarter round in the inside of the windows to kind of cover up where the foam and the steel meet everything. Dang, boy, that looks sharp. Like this. Okay. Level with it. What do you think? Sure. This is the. It's kind of hard to see because the it's just little light. window trim. Yeah, this is the trim that I picked out for our doors and windows. I want everything to match, 
So how we have far? wood for the um, bottom of the sill and then we're gonna put this along the trim. How far are you gonna want it to extend out? I think that's probably good right there. So that's an inch. Mm, uh, maybe like an inch and a half. Yeah. That's an inch and a half. That's good. And then are you gonna want it to be just a 90 degree like this or do you want it to angle in or? I don't know, let me look on Pinterest. This is what happens every time I ask, hey, what do you want this to look like? <laughs> what do you think? I like it. And now we staple it in. Is it too loud in there for you? Nitro does not like loud noises at all. So I realized I didn't buy enough uh, quarter round either, so we're gonna make a trip to Home Depot, we decided, before they close. Well, I guess I am gonna go ahead and put trim around the closet door since we can go buy some anyway, so let's do it. It's going to hang over just a little bit to cover up how the door is in place. So there's a couple areas that we'll have to add in wood filler um, whenever we do like finishing touches and paint and all of that, but I have no idea what color I wanna paint this house. I have no idea what color I wanna paint my trim. So right now we are just and then as Cody showed you on the bottom we just have a wood piece right here so this will get painted and then all of this will get caulking or wood fill in to make it all look seamless and as one but right now we're just getting the trim in place Plus, this window is extremely dirty from my dog's slobber and then spray foam remnants and other things. So she definitely needs a good cleaning, but we ain't got time for that right now. So it's $1.39 a square foot. It'd be about 900 bucks to do the house just for the tile. That's not including. What do we think? Do we like her? I like her. She's really pretty and she's cheap. What's the reason that we have to do tile for the house instead of doing like hardwood or carpet? Uh, if we do ceramic tile, then we don't have to worry about putting brick down for the fireplace. Yes. So he's talking about on the floor. Obviously, we're going to do brick on the walls, but in terms of the floor, as long as we have tile, we don't. There's, we're not breaking any code, so. He doesn't let me do anything. He has to do everything. I try to help and he says no. What in the world, Cody? 
Uh, well, this is St. Louis, so I put an arch in the car. <laughs> All right, we're back from our Home Depot run. We're gonna finish up this window and then I think do a couple pieces of trim on the door frame before we call tonight, mostly because I gotta get the table saw out and use that to be able to finish the door jam. We ain't so doing that tonight. We're gonna do that in the morning. But no. Still in this now, video, but not right now. For now, let's finish this window. Yeah. Oh, remnants of spray foam. If you're gonna spray foam, cover everything you don't want spray foam on. Yeah. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. You are literally the cutest boy around town. Basically, I need to do the top piece before I can do the side piece, and I can't do the top piece until I have this side piece on because since it's a pocket door, the uh, trim's gonna come down like all the way to here because it has to hide this gap from the top of the door, so. We have to wait until the morning, basically. Yeah. Quick little overview. So I saw on Facebook that apparently we could see the northern lights tonight. I'm assuming probably because there's solar flares. God, again, my whole head is cut off. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's like, I, do, I need to invest in a tripod, but I just don't. I know, we need to invest in like one of the heavy duty aluminum ones, not one that's made of plastic. We need to invest in a lot of things that I just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyways. So, we're gonna go lay on the roof and look at the stars. Yeah. And hopefully the Northern Lights, but I guess we'll find out. And it's a cold one, so it's a sweatpants night. I think anywhere from 60 to, you know, 70, so mm -hmm. it's nice. Oh my god, Definitely they, they really can't see you at all. I know. It helps keep the house cool throughout the day because then like the house cools down a lot at nighttime and, th and then it prolongs how long before we have to turn the AC on, so mm -hmm. helps us save power. Okay, let's go look at the stars. By the way, y'all probably won't be able to see anything, so I probably won't have anything to show you right now. We're about to go in, so I will ruin our night vision. That's the scope, and then we have just a pillow and blanket, a pillow that I do not care about, and I took the pillowcase off so it doesn't get ruined. That's the moon. All right, so it's the next day. We're gonna work on finishing up the door jams.
we're gonna get our piece of wood put in the door jam and then close the door. That way we can see where the door naturally hangs at. And then we'll go ahead and make our markings on each side of the door. So now we're gonna make a groove in the middle of our door jam to make a recession for the uh, door to actually slide into. If I remember correctly, it's called a dado cut, but my shop te teacher, Mr. Fox, would probably yell at me and I'm probably wrong. So to start off, we're gonna make sure our saw blade is about a quarter of an inch up off the table. We're gonna set our fence to one and three eighths because that's where our first mark is. And then we can double check it right there and see our measurement lines up the saw blade. Now we move the saw blade over or the fence over and we're just gonna keep making cuts until we get this whole group cut out. Well, typically this would work a lot better if I had an actual chisel, but I'm a mechanic and I have a gasket scraper, so. We got our board cut to size and the groove cut down the middle and then we went ahead and sanded the groove to get all the leftover ridges from the table saw blade out of there and now we just need, need the nailer into place. Now we're going to go cut the same board for the other door. We got them both cut, so we're gonna staple them in. I'm gonna move this bracket for the hanger for the top of the door over a little bit. I just put it a little too close to the side whenever I first put it on so the wheel kind of falls off the track on the top side. So if we move it over we shouldn't have that issue. And then last thing we gotta put the pocket door guides on the bottom. majority of the trim my space boards and this door right here yeah so i jacked up making one of the cuts and we ran out of trim so so another trip to home depot today and we'll finish that one i'm gonna address this because i know we're gonna get comments on it i'm sure people are gonna ask why we put on baseboards when we still have to do the flooring we made sure to leave enough gap to account for the flooring that's gonna go in and we actually made it a little bit long so that way if the flooring comes up well we can just trim the bottom of it right here a little bit whenever we put the flooring in so makes for one extra step but it'll still look just the same when it's finished and we have trim now yeah. and the best part about it our doors 
is the door actually shuts all the way. And seals. <laughs> it's very exciting. So now we need to pick up a hardware kit like we have on that other door. And then we can put a lock in right here too. All right, so we still have to do a, a lot of the mudding and then paint in the bedroom. Um, but one thing I actually learned with the last house is you don't want to paint before you do the trim because you got to worry about the little bit of gap between the trim and the wall in a lot of places. So we'll take some paintable caulk and run it down that line to make it seamless. And then whenever we paint it, we can, you know, paint the wall color a straight line and then paint a straight line with this to make them separate from each other. But um, definitely want to get that done before we do any painting. A few of the other things that we need to do in this room are take down the ceiling, add the extra beam to put in the ceiling fan that I so desperately want. Um, we also might add just a little bit more fiberglass insulation to bring up the R factor. Um, you know, if, if you're new here, we do have spray foam insulation. I just want to make sure I'm clarifying that. We do have spray foam for that vapor barrier and then we have um, regular fiberglass to just bring up the R factor. Other than that, those are really the main things that we have to do in this room. The rest of it is just finishing touches. And like I said, I have no idea what I want to paint color-wise um, or really anything. I don't know which wall I want to ship lap. I don't know if I want to do wallpaper. I don't know if I want to Oh no, even... we're not doing wallpaper. You don't know that. I do know that. No, you don't. That's the one thing I know we're not doing. Okay, well, if he wakes up and one whole wall is wallpaper. So that's about it for this video. We're gonna go ahead and answer a couple questions really quick. Kenneth asked, are you covering the greenhouse with plastic and adding vents, lights, etc.?" Yes and no. We are gonna cover it with plastic. That way it retains the heat in the winter. Um, what else did he ask? Adding vents. Um, so I'm really not sure what we're gonna do in the springtime yet as far as like if we're just gonna make windows and vents and then leave the plastic on there or if we're just going to take the plastic off in the summer um, we'll probably end up deciding that in the springtime but I think we're probably just going to put plastic on it for the winter and then take it off in the spring mm -hmm. so we won't need vents we won't need lights or anything like that I'm so sorry if I mispronounced this Lizzo I kind of like that 55 <laughs> the place is really shaping up won't the critters get down there and chop it down Get in there and chomp down. Get get in there and chomp down. Uh, yeah, they probably would. We're gonna put some uh, chicken wire around the base side of it to be able to keep like the raccoon out and mice and stuff like that. Yeah. But luckily the raccoon has not found it yet. He doesn't know that there's food over there. It's really just the so, raccoon that we have to worry about. Yeah, that's really the only thing we have issues with. And um, he's a fat boy. He yeah. has single-handedly been fed by us multiple yeah. times, our, not our, on purpose. Our subdivision had issues with getting the trash service to come pick up the trash there for about a month or two. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately we had trash that kept accumulating because we couldn't get rid of it. Yeah, and we didn't want to so, leave it in the house because of our dogs. Yeah, so the raccoon just kept tearing it all up and getting real fat. And we but. even made a raccoon-proof cage and he made it non-raccoon. And then we do have deer that come by too, but I think all the noise that we make typically makes them kind of V around our property because like where our house sits, there's valleys on each side. So we always see deer walking through the valleys, but they never actually come by our house at all. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think we'll have issues with them in the greenhouse. Yeah. Um, especially after we get our food plot planted down by the creek for the deer. Yes. Um, they'll have their own food to eat then. Yeah, in Texas you can add deer feeders. You cannot do that in Missouri, apparently. Um, we found out because somebody trespassed on our property and found out that we had deer corn out and then the game worm walked our property for like two hours. Um, you would not have known that there was deer corn on our property unless you had walked on our property. So yeah, you know, this was like a year ago, yeah, but yeah. Not, but yeah, this wasn't recent, but that's how we found out is because in Texas my whole life, I, you know, we fed deer with deer corn and feeders and things like that. And you could not do that here apparently, so. We had a lot of good tips and um, advice for the greenhouse. Yeah, a couple people told me to trim the flowers or told us to trim the flowers off the basil. I did do that. I appreciate those tips. Mm -hmm. Keep them coming because we don't know how to garden and we're new to it. So yes, it's very, stuff like very that, new. we don't know unless we actually sit down and research it. So. I know, and then some people have commented to break up the soil before I put it into the pot, and I didn't even think of that. But looking back, that would have been a great idea yeah. to break and up the roots. I did go back and uh, kind of break it up on on top of the surface mm -hmm. around each one of the plants yesterday so yeah so please keep the um comments coming they definitely help and no idea what we're working on next week i really hope it's the ducks i love the ducks but yeah i want to get see. the ducks out of the house they're huge okay 
But anyways, that's, that's pretty it. much it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks. Please. Now we only get one life on one.